Now on a different matter, I've spoken many times about Adele Manji, President Biden's nominee to the Third Circuit. I've covered his shocking and deep association with virulent anti-Semites and how he muscled, uh, misled the Senate about them. I've also covered his association with anti-police radicals. Just last week, it was revealed that Mr. Maji had introduced one of his anti-cop friends to the head of the Rutgers Center for Security, Race, and Rights so they could, quote, collaborate on a project. Democrats can't rebut these disqualifying associations because they're facts. So instead, they mounted an all-out campaign to gin up left-wing support for Mr. Maggi and force our Democratic colleagues to walk the plank on this nomination. And in so doing, they've given the Senate reason to move from questioning Mr. Maggi's judgment to questioning his ethics. After the biggest police unions came out in opposition to his nomination, Mr. Maggi complained in an extraordinary letter to one of my colleagues that the groups opposing him never spoke to him about his position or views. Really? What would these outside parties have learned about his views had they asked? Well, we don't actually have to guess. For the past few months, Democrats have paraded Mr. Manji in front of liberal interest groups in order to secure their endorsements. For example, a group of left-leaning law enforcement organizations met with Manji and then praised his commitment to help ensure equity in law enforcement. Equity in law enforcement? What on earth does that even mean? Are those his views? These are questions our colleagues on the Judiciary Committee might have liked to ask Manji, but unfortunately, these meetings took place after, after his hearing. More recently, 125 progressive organizations sent a letter supporting Manji. How many of these left-wing organizations has Manji met with? Did he meet with the FLCIO? What views did he discuss with them? We'll never know. You see, Mr. President, nominees have to disclose in their questionnaires whether or not they've made any promises during their confirmation process. Committee Republicans also ask written questions about meetings and coordination with left-wing dark money. But what Manji has found is that if he makes the sales pitch after, after the committee process is over, as he did with certain law enforcement groups, and maybe to others, nothing needs to be disclosed. This is particularly troubling, given that these small law enforcement groups seem to almost be, almost always, based in very democratic New Jersey counties like Middlesex and Hudson. Hudson County, of course, is the home to one of the last old style democratic political machines. And the ward boss is taking care of Mr. Manji. What do they respect in return? Compare this to the behavior of Judge Qureshi, the nation's first Muslim district judge, whom I supported and have mentioned before. Judge Qureshi recently made headlines by striking down down New Jersey's unique and uniquely corrupt primary balloting system. In other words, he drained the lifeblood of the same Hudson County Democratic machine while it was calling in favors for Manji. As I've said, there's a better way in New Jersey if only the Biden administration would care to look. It's the role of the Senate to provide advice and consent we ask nominees questions and evaluate their answers. We judge nominees on that political record. Magic closed door meetings with inter interest groups short circus that process and call into question what fairness we might expect from them. It's yet another reason the Senate should not, cannot confirm 
Roger.